Everything you think you know about the universe is incomplete. Astronomers just found a hidden mass in deep space, five billion times heavier than our sun, where not a single star can be seen. Standard theory says such an object should be blazing with light, yet our best cameras see only darkness. The numbers don't lie, but the silence is deafening. Why is something so massive, so invisible? This is the story the James Webb era wasn't supposed to face, and what's buried inside will force us to reconsider what we're really missing in the cosmic dark. In 2023, the 500-meter Aperture Spherical Telescope, FAST, was running a neutral hydrogen survey in the outer halo of Messier 94, a spiral galaxy about 14 million light years from Earth. The team was searching for the faintest traces of atomic hydrogen at the 21 centimeter line, a frequency that cuts through cosmic dust and darkness, revealing where the universe hides its coldest, most diffuse gas. FAST's single dish design, spanning half a kilometer, delivers unmatched sensitivity for these faint signals. Each scan sweeps a wide patch of sky, breaking radio noise into thousands of spectral channels each tuned to catch narrowband emission from hydrogen atoms moving at different velocities. The survey data flagged a compact, high-contrast signal, an unexpected spike in the 21-centimeter band sitting in the outskirts of Messier 94. The coordinates did not match any known galaxy, star, or cataloged gas cloud. The line was too sharp and too strong to be dismissed as interference or an instrumental echo. FAST's back-end systems had already filtered out terrestrial radio noise and cross-checked the signal across multiple scans. The hydrogen line stood out against the background, its profile consistent with a cold static cloud rather than a moving stream or a fragment of galactic debris. The radio discovery team ran the numbers again. The signal's width and integrated flux pointed to a mass of about one million suns in neutral hydrogen, spread over a region nearly 5,000 light-years across. But there was nothing else, no thermal signature, no sign of a stellar population, just a clean, isolated hydrogen line. The detection chain, survey scan, back-end processing, radio frequency interference checks, and cross-verification held up under scrutiny. The coordinates were precise, the line was real, and the object was new. Every step in the data chain pointed to the same conclusion. Something massive and invisible was sitting in the void, broadcasting its presence only through a whisper of hydrogen at a frequency the universe rarely uses for anything else. With the signal confirmed in the radio, the next step was clear. To rule out a faint hidden galaxy or a background source, the team needed optical confirmation. The question was no longer whether the object existed, but what, if anything, could be seen when the cameras turned to that patch of sky. Hubble's advanced camera for surveys was assigned the coordinates flagged by the radio team. The observing plan was simple, go deep enough to catch even the faintest red giants or main sequence stars at the distance of M94. Over several orbits, the detectors accumulated exposure in two broad filters and reached surface brightness limits that routinely reveal the skeletal remains of ultra-faint dwarf galaxies. When the reduction pipeline finished, the result was absolute. The field was blank. Not a single resolved star appeared at the position of the hydrogen cloud. Every point source inside the projected area matched the color and sharpness of background galaxies, not stars at 14 million light years. The imaging analysts ran artificial star tests, injecting simulated dwarf galaxies at the same distance and verifying that anything brighter than a few thousand solar masses and stars would have been visible. The verdict stood. No stellar population, no diffuse glow, no hint of a hidden galaxy, just a void in optical light, punctuated only by the unrelated background universe. With the optical result in hand, the analyst returned to the radio data. The hydrogen line's integrated flux, combined with the known distance to M94, gave a neutral gas mass of about one million suns. But the real shock came from the gas distribution. The cloud's profile was nearly spherical, with a core spanning almost 5,000 light years. The line width was narrow, implying the gas was cold and not rotating. To keep such a large, diffuse cloud stable for billions of years, gravity alone would have to do the work. 
Using hydrostatic equilibrium models, the team calculated the mass required to confine the gas against thermal pressure. The answer was 5 billion solar masses. That is a mass ratio of 5,000 to 1, dark matter to visible gas. The numbers left no room for error. What looked like a blank spot in the sky was, by mass, one of the heaviest objects in the region. If not for its hydrogen fingerprint, it would have been invisible to every telescope on Earth. The finding posed a direct challenge to standard expectations. With this much gravity, the cloud should have collapsed, ignited, and built stars long ago. Instead, it remained a perfect ghost, massive, cold, dark, and stable. The mystery was no longer about detection, it was about explanation. How does a structure this heavy and this empty persist, and what kind of theory can account for such a silent anchor in the cosmic web? Cloud 9 now sits at the heart of a sharp debate over what counts as a galaxy, and where the laws of cosmic assembly draw their lines. According to the leading cosmological model, Lambda Cold Dark Matter, there is a threshold halo mass below which the universe's ultraviolet background sterilizes gas, preventing it from ever cooling and collapsing into stars. In this framework, Cloud 9 fits the textbook definition of a reionization limited HY cloud, also called RELHIC. It is a starless, gas-rich dark matter halo in perfect hydrostatic and thermal balance with the cosmic ultraviolet field. The numbers line up. Simulations led by theorists like Alejandro Benitez Lambe predict that halos just below a few billion solar masses should end up as these failed galaxies, holding on to their gas but never crossing the threshold to ignite star formation. As one simulation lead put it, at the threshold, the outcome is a coin toss. Some halos light up, some stay dark forever. But the data from Cloud9 still bite. The cloud's mass and stability match Relhic predictions, yet its gas remains so cold, so undisturbed, and so perfectly spherical that it strains the limits of what simulations typically produce. If the official story holds, Cloud9 should be a fossil, a primordial relic left behind by Reionization's heatwave. Yet, when astronomers turn to the most powerful infrared eye ever built, the James Webb Space Telescope, there is no observation, no faint thermal glow, no whisper of hidden stars, and no trace of warm dust. Webb has not yet delivered a verdict. The absence of a signature from the James Webb Space Telescope leaves the Relhic explanation balanced on a knife edge. Either theory has finally caught up with reality, or there is something fundamentally missing in our understanding of how dark halos and cold gas share space in the modern universe. Legal boundaries are being redrawn every time a new piece of the invisible universe comes into focus. The DC Circuit's decision in DISH Network versus FCC opened the door for thousands of new satellites to flood Earth's orbit. Each new satellite adds to a rising tide of radio noise, raising the baseline interference that ground-based telescopes must fight to hear faint cosmic signals. The international rules that once protected the 21-centimeter hydrogen line, the very frequency that revealed Cloud 9, are now under pressure from commercial interests and regulatory expedients. Astronomers warn that as the noise floor climbs, entire classes of dark objects could slip beneath detection, not by cosmic accident, but by policy choice. On the personnel front, the Supreme Court's ruling in NASA versus Nelson affirmed the agency's right to conduct in-depth background checks on scientists and contractors. Officially, these are routine measures for federal employment. Unofficially, some researchers whisper about a new kind of gatekeeping. Access to raw data, pipeline code, and even observing proposals can require clearance checks that go far beyond standard practice in academic science. The logic is simple. When you are peering into the 95% of the universe that is invisible, the information you uncover is no longer just academic. It becomes a matter of national interest, or so the paperwork suggests. The result is a world where the tools to see the dark universe are being boxed in from both sides. Technical limits rise as the radio sky fills with satellites, and legal and administrative hurdles grow taller for those who want to look deeper. One interpretation is that this is the price of progress, a society balancing curiosity against security and commerce. Another is that we are quietly accepting a future in which the universe's hidden architecture is rendered permanently out of reach. 
If most of the cosmos is dark, then what does it mean to let the dark win by default? The question is not just what Cloud9 is, but who gets to decide how much of the invisible world we are allowed to see. Right now, the universe hides its deepest structure behind silence and shadow. As satellites crowd our skies and technology blinds our telescopes, the true architecture of reality grows harder to see. What we can't detect, we can't explain, and what we can't explain we are not allowed to ignore, 